Cataractcoach.com. Cortex removal before nucleus removal. What? Learn why this surgeon changed the surgical sequence for this case. Our guest surgeon here is Dr. Gary Wartz, and notice how he's doing cortex removal, even though there are three of the four quadrants of the nucleus left in the bag. Why would you do that? Well, the patient's less than cooperative, lots of movement going on, and he thought it had a neat idea with one quadrant gone, he could just remove the cortex and use the three remaining lens quadrants to weigh down and hold the capsule bag in place. And so look how he rotates this, takes out some cortex from this quadrant, and then rotates it again. And I thought that was pretty clever. Watch carefully. This patient's going to keep moving a lot. And this is a, I, I get the safety here. It makes a lot of sense to me. I get it. So I've never done this in how many years? In tw- more than 20 years, like 25 years of cataract surgery or more? Never done this before, but this patient is all over the place. Look at that movement. And then he's able to get this cortex out, leaving the three nuclear quadrants in the bag so far. And then he's got another neat trick. And that trick is he'll take out two of the quadrants and leave one quadrant piece in the bag remaining to hold things down as he puts the new lens in. And then the new lens will weigh down the caps or bag and prevent the posterior capsule from coming forwards when he's removing that last quadrant. So again, three quadrants in the bag. Now look what happens. Cortex is gone. Using the FACO probe, here's the chopper. And buzzing into that one quadrant, comes out pretty quick, pretty easy. There it is. And then here comes another quadrant. So just wiping the ocular surface here. And chopper going back inside the eye, another quadrant's coming out. And look, the capture bag absolutely is completely empty. Really nothing left in the bag except for that nuclear piece. But all the cortex has already been pre-removed using that technique. Now with one quadrant left in, it's going to put the eye well in the bag first. So a very different way of thinking. I admire that. I admire that you're willing to think a little differently and kind of think on the fly. Maybe, as we would say, MacGyver it or think of an unusual solution to come up with a good plan for this patient. So now here comes the viscoelastic, filling up the capsule bag, not worrying about that last big quadrant. That'll come out later. And then getting the IOL in the capsule bag. And here comes the IOL. And deliver that IOL in the capsule bag. And again, I'm showing you this video because this is something I've not seen in 25 years. I've never seen this before. But it, I get it. I understand why he did it. It makes sense. And, and I like the video. I want to share it with you. That way you can say, yo, well, I've seen that before. Now look, the capsule bag is being protected by the IOL. Beautifully so. Speculum has to go back into position. This patient's squeezing so much. The patient's bending the metal speculum. And then now that last piece can come out. And look, you can do it with almost impunity because you know no, no matter what happens, you're not going to hit the capsule, the capsule bag. The your capsule is safe because it's protected by that optic. There's the last piece of the lens material. Also, all the viscoelastic's coming out of the eye quite nicely. If you want, you can switch over to the eye probe for those last little fragments. Maybe get it behind the eye well that way. And again, look, patient's still moving quite a bit. Now, one other thing that's interesting, I want to tell, point this out to you, is the incision. Dr. Wartz has a different style of incision. That main phaco incision, it's almost like the pre-pocket we saw from Dr. Andre Berger or the Wong Wei incision. And that's just to create another little pocket in front of the big incision. And so you can hydrate that and it'll push down on the incision to really help seal it. And you'll see at the end here, as he seals the incision, it does that. He seals that central pocket and it pushes down on the main incision. And then at the end here, we've got a very short one minute video of Dr. Wards explaining his special incision technique. So watch this at the end, hydration right there in that central pocket, boom, and it just holds the incision shut. Check it out. This is the anterior stromal pocket incision that is a Wang Wei modification. As you can see, I'm making my normal uh, limbal incision, but before I take my knife out, I'm making a small anterior stromal pocket in the superior lip of the wound. When I go to close the incision, I'm just doing my stromal hydration um, into that pocket and then in both corners of the incision. It creates a very strong seal uh, without an epi defect, and uh, I think it's the strongest seal I've ever experienced. I think you'll like it.